Right then, <clears throat> so start of your course, really, when you're talking about Germany 1918 to 39, really has to start with the Treaty of Versailles. Um, now, First World War, 1914 to 1918, allies against Germany. Okay, As you may be aware, Germany lost that war. Um, if you didn't, whoops. Now, um, on the 9th of November 1918, the Kaiser, who was the King of Germany, abdicated. That means he stepped down from the throne. Now, two days later, on the 11th of November, as hopefully you know being students of history, um, the armistice was signed on the German part by a guy called Matthias Erzberger, okay, who was a representative of the new government in Germany, or the new republic in Germany. Because as the Kaiser stepped down, there's no longer a king, Germany became a republic, there was a power vacuum. No one was in charge. Matthias Erzberger steps in. Now, um, once the um, ceasefire, the armistice, had been signed on the 11th of the 11th, 1918, at 11 o'clock, um, Woodrow Wilson, the leader of, uh, of America, sorry, uh, Lloyd George, the leader of Britain, and Georges Clemenceau, the leader of France, drew up a peace treaty. Now, the thing about this is that although a ceasefire had been signed, actually, um, Germany was not involved in drawing up this peace treaty. The Allies, Britain, France, and America, very much saw Germany as the defeated nation. Um, that's very important later on. Now, Germany was forced to sign the Treaty of Versailles. It's known as a diktat, D-I-K-T-A-T, diktat, dictated peace. Now, the Germans were not part of the negotiations for the Treaty of Versailles, and they had to accept, they were forced to accept the terms, or the war would start again. Now, whilst the German army had not been defeated, it had been pushed right back from Belgium and France all the way back to the German border. Now, the German army still existed, it was there, and it had its guns and ammunition and its tanks and stuff. But actually, it wasn't in a position anymore to, to fight the Allies. The Allies had um, made the most of the, the Ludendorff Offensive of 1918, where the Germans attacked the Western Front in a large, last-ditch effort to, um, to, to, to beat the Allies. Unfortunately, it failed. They ran out of supplies, um, got exhausted. And the Allies then pushed the Germans all the way back, massively helped by new fresh troops from America and a massive influx of American supplies. Um, and within 100 days, the war was over. So, the Germans were faced with a choice. You sign the treaty, or the war starts again, and we start fighting in Germany. And you're not going to win that, so just sign it. Okay? Um, now, the Treaty of Versailles, as you may or may not know, and hopefully by the end of this you will know, was extremely harsh. When you think of the Treaty of Versailles, there's only one word that comes into your mind, harsh. It's so harsh on Germany. It really is. Um, <clears throat> first term, there are six, six, six terms of the Treaty of Versailles. First one, the War Guilt Clause. Germany was forced to sign the War Guilt Clause, which said, we started the war, it's all our fault. Now, funnily enough, that's actually very unpopular in Germany, because if you remember anything from your Year 9 history or previous bits of your GCSE course, strictly speaking, the Germans didn't really start it. Um, but what's important about the War Guilt Clause is if the Germans accept blame for starting the war, then all the other punishments that are, are um, imposed by the Allies have to be accepted. They've said they're wrong. So the second term of the Treaty of Versailles was a thing called Reparations, R-E-P. A-R-A-T-I-O-N-S, reparations. And that's money to be paid by Germany to the countries that had suffered during the fighting to repair those countries. Now, France wanted obscene amounts of money. Britain wanted quite a lot of money. And the Americans weren't really so bothered because not a massive amount of fighting had taken place. Regardless of that, the final figure that was reached was £6.6 .6 billion, pounds, or Six thousand six hundred million pounds. Personally, I prefer six point six billion. Much easier to remember. But don't forget the pound sign at the end of it because that really bugs me. Okay? Be factually as correct as you can. Now, in addition to having to pay six point six billion pounds in reparations, the armed forces of Germany were massively reduced. Don't forget that Germany actually had one of the largest armies in 1914, and it had been a source of major national pride. However, the Treaty of Versailles said. Right, your armed forces, you are limited to 100,000 soldiers. That's it. You can have six, oh, here we go again, six 
battleships, big old ships. You'll have no submarines, no aircraft, and no tanks. Okay? So it's a pretty puny army. Um, particularly when the other countries had these massive ones. It makes Germany very, very, very weak and insecure. In addition, oh, and, and um, Germany had to demilitarize the Rhineland, which is the bit of border between France and Germany. So they were allowed no troops, no military forces there whatsoever. Again, that makes them very weak and very vulnerable. Um, in addition to this, Germany lost all of its foreign colonies. Um, many of them went to Britain and France to be run. Fifthly, um, Germany lost an enormous amount of territory. For example, Alsace and Lorraine were given back to France, which the French had lost in the Franco-Prussian War of the 1870s. Um, Epen, Eupen, Epen, E-U-P-E-N, and Malmedy went to Belgium. Posen, Posen, and West Prussia went to Poland. And overall, Germany lost 13% of its European colonies. As did you do, of its European territory, sorry. 50% um, of its iron reserves and 15% of its coal reserves. It's lost in a huge chunk. The bits that Germany loses are the really cool bits with great resources that Germany's going to need to rebuild, especially if it's got to pay £6.6 .6 billion worth of reparations. You can't expect Germany to pay that and take away all its cool stuff. All right. Um, <clears throat> And in the sixth term was the League of Nations was set up. Now, the League of Nations is the precursor to our United Nations, to our United Nations. Now, <clears throat> this is basically a talking shop where everyone would get together. If they had a problem, they'd sit down, they'd thrash it out, not literally, not physically. They'd talk about it, and they'd come to an arrangement, and war could be averted because this great war of 1914 to 18 was supposed to be the last war. Remember, it wasn't the First World War then. It was the Great War, the war to end all wars. They didn't want it to happen again. Crucially, though, Germany was not invited to join the League of Nations. It was still kind of the pariah, which means the, the bad boy of Germany. It's not allowed in, okay, until it proves itself to be good. So, unsurprisingly, because the Treaty of Versailles is or was so harsh, um, it was very, 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 very unpopular in Germany. And funnily enough, the Germans themselves blamed their political leaders, their new leaders. <coughs> Who they thought so straight away they had the new leaders had seriously weakened the the new democracy the new republic in Germany because it was so unpopular because they'd had to sign this treaty of Versailles. Now it led to it gave rise to a theory called the Dolchstoss theory D O L D O L C H S T O W S Dolchstoss theory. If you prefer, if you're not very good at German like my good self, uh, you can call it the stabbed in the back or stab in the back theory. And this was the idea that um, the German army, as I said earlier, had not actually physically been defeated. <clears throat> Many people felt they'd been betrayed by the politicians in Germany who'd signed the Treaty of Versailles. Um, they, they felt the army had been stabbed in the back by the politicians. And the politicians who signed this Treaty of Versailles in November were called the November criminals. That gives you a pretty good idea about how unpopular they were in Germany. Um, now, the key thing about the Treaty of Versailles is it has three key effects in Germany. Firstly, it weakens the popularity of the Weimar Republic. Right from the start, it's pretty much on a hiding to nothing. People don't like it. Secondly, it causes major political protest. As you'll learn later on, the Spartacists, the, the Cat Putsch, the Munich Putsch, the Weimar Republic is, is very unpopular. And third, thirdly, it causes some major problems for the German economy. Because of its failure to pay the reparations, the French and the Belgians occupy the Ruhr which causes hyperinflation and destroys the German economy. The Treaty of Versailles is very, very important to understand the whole of this course. But essentially, six things to remember about the Treaty of Versailles and one word, harsh. Okay? Hope that's of some help.